Hello, everybody. Um, Maria Banga, yeah, Country Director for the GBM Foundation for Epilepsy and Mental Wellbeing, and um, sister to the late Gabriel Bebombeche, in whose honor we created the foundation. And um, yeah, I wrote his journey, you know, when my brother died. I mean, this was to die. It was like I had to keep my at all costs because I was so close to my brother. We went through so much together and oof, in, I was crazy, insomnia and um, hyperactivity and a lot of things which can make somebody really go complete nuts. I'm, I'm very lucky I was not locked up in any hospital or anything. So, yeah, this is uh, November, um, Epilepsy Awareness Month. And um, epilepsy is one of those conditions like um, sickle cell, like um, any other mental illness, you know, like autism and stuff. People don't understand what's happening until they just conclude that the person should be shunned, the person should be marginalized, the person, nobody should go near the person. You know, epilepsy, people say it's contagious. So you see somebody having a seizure, instead of trying to see how you can help the person, people are running away because, you know, they say that saliva from his mouth can contaminate her eyes. I'm not, I don't have epilepsy, so I was not contaminated, right? Whatever. You know, people are so limited in their false beliefs and conceptions and everything. And then they, they think that when they stigmatize people, then they are more than those people. So ridiculous. Okay, anyway, so what was I looking at today? I was looking at my brother's journey and how stigma really got to him. My brother started having seizures in Seat of Wisdom College, Fontaine. So I was in Form 3, I can remember. And then my brother was in Form 2. And... um. The school was a very close-knit school, like one big family, frankly speaking. I don't know. That school. And the principal was called Mother Jane. She was so motherly. And everybody there cared about everybody. And up to today, it's like one big family. So when my brother started having seizures in that school, we didn't even know it was called epilepsy. We just knew he was fainting fits and everybody was so concerned. So when you have a seizure, everybody will come around, will go and look for the principal, they'll carry him in the school Land Rover, take him to the hospital, and then we'll prepare his food and water and I'll take him to the hospital. And I was just giving permission to go and stay with him in the hospital. It was not like anything super, I don't know what, like people should be scared, people should be afraid, people should start to talk about it. And when he came back to school, even while he was in hospital, people were taking his notes, taking notes for him in class. And when he came back to school, we were all so concerned and we just wanted him to get back on his feet. And he loved being involved in stuff like um, being the referee in football, teaching people, living from five students, doing all of those things. But then um, at some point, the seizures grew up in, and mom was concerned. She was all the way in Dwala and he was all the way in Fontem. That's like eight hours away. So sometimes she'll want to get to him quickly and she cannot get to him. And then the seizures started affecting his brain so much. He would leave hospital and just go, go, go and everything. So I think she thought that bringing him closer to her, it was going to help him. And so she brought him closer and enrolled him in Bishop Rogan College. First seizure only, the guy was dismissed. That's a school where somebody went to hoping to become a priest, you know, where we think that inclusion and everything and stuff. Mm -mm. They say he's not fit to be a priest because, well, he has epilepsy. So, took him out from there, took him to Sase, same Waterloo. He ended up being in Lycée Bileng and that's where he had his advanced level and everything. And he's living at home, it was... And then my brother was a very intelligent person, so no matter the absences from school and the ill health and everything, he could still do well. Okay, well, then my mom, we all thought that if he goes abroad, they, they thought, because I, we in little children at that time, what opinion did we have? Things would get better. And so he went to Germany. But then, I don't know what happened in Germany. I wasn't really in Germany. All I know is that at some point, the seizures, and then he just lost his mind and he started going off. We don't know where he was going to. Once in a while, he would let me know. He would let anybody know where he is and would jump up and would be happy. And not, and then after that, things got so bad and he had to be located and repatriated. My brother came back a complete, I don't know, 
he was trembling like this. But then we still had this bond, you know, he used to call me Mama, you, and so he would always be around me. And I was the one taking him to the lab for the test. And when he's hospitalized, he would say he wants me to come and stay with him in the hospital and stuff like that. So, yeah, he told me a lot of things about what happened during that period. And that's how I was able to put them here in this book um, and everything. Oof, yeah, I mean, what's the point with all of that stigma? I remember even when he came back, sometimes, and then by then he had already lost his mind a little bit more, so he was like, well, we'll call mental illness, right? So when we are walking on the street, he'll be there greeting people. When we sit in a cab, he'll just be greeting people, and he'll be talking to people, and he doesn't sit quiet, you know, and uh, talking, 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 especially when he's a bit hyper, you know, what we call manic. Talking about the football match, talking about things, and people will just be looking at him like, and people will be going, you know, and sometimes, you, sometimes when I walk on the street, when I see them, I smile and I greet them. And then they answer and they're kind of surprised, like, who is this having our time, not scared of us and greeting us and asking us how is our day? And those people, we are the ones thinking that they are, no, me, they are my friends. When I see these people on the streets, I greet them, I respect them. When I see people anywhere, especially if they tell me somebody has seizures and everything, like one little girl I had at the hospital, I used to invite her for weekends, you know, and she will not have any seizure during that weekend, and even if she has. I would turn her to the side. I would do this. I would just embrace her and stop. People need love and acceptance. All this stigma, actually we stigmatize ourselves because we show how illiterate we are when we think that because they are that way, then we should shun them. So I'm doing this video to talk to you, to all those who are going to be looking at this thing. Stop the stigma. If you don't know, get informed. And if you cannot help somebody, at least don't frown, don't think that you ridicule that person or you go and talk behind your back and say, eh, that family, ballot picking, this and that. It's not good, people. It's not good. And I think that all what we want is to live a peaceful life, a good life, because everybody is going to die. There's nobody who is not going to die. So you don't want to go and then people are saying, hey, that one who was ever having a negative thing to say about people, who was always stigmatizing people, who was always making people feel ashamed about their conditions, like they themselves didn't have a condition. My brother is gone, but his memory lives on. I'm so happy I, I was able to write this book, My Brother's Journey from Genus to Simpleton. Sometimes we see people walking on the street. We don't know their journey. We don't know their story. I remember as a kid, people would pick stones and throw. And I used to tell my friends, why are you throwing a stone? Do you know their story? I didn't even know I was going to end up having that kind of story right in my own home with my brother. And so you can imagine if I was working with him and somebody looked, one person even spat, oh my God. If I was not the person I was, I would have fought with that person. You see somebody passing, just because the person greets you or the person is looking a little shabby or the person is trembling or something, you spit on the ground. What kind of attitude is that? Between you and that person, who is the fool at that moment? Okay, well. I hope that people are going to watch and people are going to, 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 to understand that there's no point in doing this. Because seriously, everybody opens their closets. <laughs> Some skeletons. Somebody once asked me, why don't you keep your skeletons in your cupboard? I don't have space in my cupboard. That's why I don't keep no skeletons in my cupboard. But I think people do keep. If not, people wouldn't even know that there are skeletons that can be kept inside a cupboard. Okay, so that was my video. This is Maria Banga, um, country director for the GBM Foundation for Epilepsy and Mental Wellbeing. You know, epilepsy and mental well-being, they go hand in hand. Because, of course, you stigmatize somebody and the person starts feeling that there's something wrong with them and so they keep to themselves and then they start behaving funny. They interpret things their own way and they're ever on the defensive or they're attacking even when there's no need to attack. And then we don't know how to, 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 to react or to act around them. And that makes them much more close up much more ashamed and they suffer a lot and then they don't even know how to express all of what's going on in them and we don't also know how to help them so please get informed get the book it is at press book in cameroon it's sold for 2500 francs only because it's a it's an awareness tool for me and then well online you can find it on the amazon also in both kindle and paperback copy Thank you very much for watching. This is Maria Banga, your advocate. Bye.